Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for waiting. Thank you, everyone, for that is here today. I'd like to uh, recognize those members that are here. Council Member Maisel, thank you so very much. Council Member Williams and Council Member Drum, and certainly our uh, bill sponsor, Council uh, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. I'm Council Member Ida Nick Miller, the Chair of Committee on Civil Service and Labor, and today we will we'll be voting on two very important pieces of legislation, intro 633 and resolutions 566, both of which have full support. I first want to talk about resolution 566, which was introduced, uh, this would, would call on the state and the, assemb the state assembly Bill uh, 10935 and State Senate Bill 8844, which would automatically enroll op optimal employees, optional employees in New York City Board of Education Retirement System, BERS, after 90 days of employment. These optional employees are approximately 37,000 part time and or temporary city government employees the, to the State Department of Education. These employees are eligible for optional enrollment in, our, in their pension system. However, only 73% of them ever join. This means that the simple lack of awareness can mean that a commitment to city employees can be lost and they can lose access to years of pension benefits to which he or she is entitled and has worked very hard to earn over the years. This resolution would essentially encourage the state to adopt legislation that would ensure part-time and temporary employees automatically be enrolled to the pension system while providing opt-out mechanism for those who truly wish not to join. I believe this is a vital step to ensuring that city employees, regardless if they are part-time or temporary, receive the pension benefits that they so rightfully deserve. I'd like to turn attention and uh, turn my attention and to now intro 633, sponsored by Majority Leader Combo and public advocate and myself, has truly been a labor of love <laughs> over this past three years. This piece of legislation would have been, uh, which we've been dealing with since 2016, is critical to the fight against wage disparity and discrimination within the city's workforce. This piece of legislation that will set the standard for other local governments around the country, around the city and around the country, as well as private sector. It shows the commitment of this council to the eradication of pay disparities within its workforce and how we have accomplished this. Unlike reporting bills of the past, Introduction 633 takes a whole new approach. Introduction 633 represents the council's truly exercising its policy legislative oversight over the city government by not simply re relying on public report put forth by the administration. The legislation gives council direct access to underlying data and, allowing, and allows council to perform its own analysis of such data, passing legislation passing this legislation will allow council to directly validate or invalidate what gets reported by the administration that is a powerful tool no longer do we have to take the face take on face value what the city agencies want to report to this legislative body as numerous lawsuits have shown like the one filed by CWA local 11 1180 back in 2016 uh, 237 and others, uh, Teamsters 237 and others, uh, which has now settled, been settled by the city, paid disparity existence. You cannot tell me otherwise. This body can no longer rely on public report by the same administration which argues these disparities do not exist or that they exist only in the fringes as a co-equal branch of government this legislation will allow us to flex our legislative oversight over the city agencies that cannot seem to get it right. This legislation represents the first step in the city council helping these agencies get it right. Councilmember Cumbo, 
Majority Leader Cumbo, public advocate and myself, and numerous advocates, we have waited a long and hard to see this legislation come to fruition. The fact that we have finally arrived here at this committee vote shows that vote yes, and we can start to take the first step of finding, finally eradicating paid discrimination within the city's workforce, whether discrimination is based on gender, race, age, or other protected categories. But before I pass it over, and, and let me just say it would also eradicate what we see quite often, is, uh, which is often the nexus of, of this problem, which is privilege and nepotism, which has uh, been a problem uh, within the municipal workforce, which is supposed to be uh, merit-based, and, and, and I think this bill go a really long way to eradicating that. So uh, I ask uh, the committee for their vote yes on this, certainly. Um, but before we turn it over for the roles, I would be honored to hear from my colleague, the majority leader, Ms. Lori Cummel. Thank you, Chair Miller. And as pop sensation star Rihanna said, pay me what you owe me. Today is a huge day for women all across the city of New York and people of all races, nationalities, age, religion, who have felt discrimination as a result of pay inequity. I am Majority Leader Cumbo, and over the past term, I have been proud to work alongside so many incredible advocates, activists, and true champions in the pursuit of equity, equality, and economic gender, racial, and social justice reforms. Today is a very proud day. We are set to pass intro 633, a local law to amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to reporting of pay and employment equity data. We are on the brink of changing the way the municipal workforce does business and changing her story as we know it. Together we will close the gender pay gap and opportunity gap for women and all people all across New York. We know that women employed in New York City's municipal government face a gender wage gap that is three times larger than the gap experienced by women working in the private sector. When I look back at my time in the city council, I will think about the countless hours working with the incredible pay equity advocates and the outstanding women that make our city run each and every day. Many of those who represent one of our finest unions, primarily made up of black and brown women of CWA Local 1180. They are responsible for this groundbreaking legislation that is going to open up the doors for so many women. Leave it to a group of dynamic women to change the course of her history for all New Yorkers. I dedicate this moment and this work to the women soldiers that pushed us, told us, and demanded more from the city council, the mayor, and every city agency across the city of New York. It is an honor to stand with so many incredible women warriors and men who get it, like the ones that are here today, to champion this piece of legislation that will pass under the incredible leadership of my dear friend and colleagues, Councilmember Donique Miller, who serves as the chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Changing the status quo takes work, and we as women have never been ones to shy away from challenges. Piece by piece, we will dismantle this gender pay gap, and we will use legislation and policy discourse to bring the issues to the forefront. We will no longer stand idle by and permit an antiquated human resources construct to perpetuate institutional discrimination in the workforce. There are many people that worked with us to make today possible. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for standing by me and always standing up for the people. I want to thank Jason Goldman, Laura Popa, Jeff Baker, Rachel Cordero, and Taser Nasser. And to the incredible work of my former women's counsel, Aminta Kilowan, and the legislative drafting attorney and leadership of Malcolm Butehorn on the Council Committee on Civil Service and Labor. I also again want to thank CWA Local 1180 and former President Arthur Chiliotis and President Gloria Middleton. Thank you Beverly Newfeld, President of Power NY and the countless advocates. And I really want to thank Public Advocate Letitia James who is now our next New York State Attorney General elect and the incredible council member sponsors on this bill for their incredible work to advance women's equity within the city and state of New York. We demand economic fairness, pure and simple. When we lift women up, 
we lift everyone up. And I would say from my time in the council, women are so incredibly dynamic, especially the Women's Caucus. We have tackled issues that impact women from wage disparities to health outcomes, from sex trafficking to domestic violence to sexual assault to a lack of child care, and most recently, the tragic situation that was unfolding last week that Jasmine Headley was subjected to in HRA. There are so many ways in which women are under attack, but we are dismantling all of those inequities throughout the city each and every day. And I just want to close, as we think about pay inequities, this has been going on systemically for so long. And in 1980, if you listen to the lyrics to this song, working nine to five, what a way to make a living, barely getting by, it's all taken and no given. They just use your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. Nine to five for service and devotion. You would think that I would deserve a fat promotion. Want to move ahead, but the boss won't seem to let me. I swear sometimes that man is out to get me. These are the lyrics of Dolly Parton written in 1980, talking about the same issues almost 40 years later that we are addressing today. So many dynamic women all across this nation have stood strong to bring greater attention to the inequities that women face. And I'm proud to be here in the New York City Council, one of 11 women who are doing extraordinary work to end the disparities that women all across the nation are facing. I strongly encourage all of my colleagues to vote aye, and I thank you for your support and for continuing to be the champions of great and strong legislation just like this one. Thank you. We've been joined by Councilmember Eric Ulrich. That, William. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on civil service and labor, introduction 633A and resolution 566. Chair Miller. Proudly vote aye. Drum. Vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Williams. Proudly vote aye on both. Congratulations to the chair and Councilman Ocumbo. Please add my name to both pieces of legislation. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye and ask my name be added as a co-sponsor as well. Thank you. Yes, on both, please. By vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, both items have been adopted by the committee. Okay, we're going to keep this open for about 15 minutes. Are you leaving?